Hey, how you doing today? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is calculating overload devices for motors with respect to 28306 in the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code. So the first thing we want to talk about with this video is what do we do with these service factors? Well, service factor on a motor is essentially kind of like a fudge factor on how much can this motor run overclocked um, for short durations of time. Okay, so for example, with this first motor, we have a service factor of 1.3, which is 130%. So we're saying that it can run at about 130% for short durations uh, without causing major damage to the motor windings. Our second motor, 1.1 or about 110%. And then our third motor here is not marked, and we'll discuss that in a minute. What do we do if we, if we don't have a marked service factor? So if we take a look at 28306 in the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code, it tells us, four marked service factors of 1.15 or more. We're going to multiply the FLA or the full load current rating of the motor by 125% or we're going to go FLA times 1.25. Okay, If we have less than 1.15, so we're going to say less than 1.15, we're going to take our FLA or our full load current, we're going to multiply that by 115% or 1.15. So we're going to go FLA times 1.15. And that would give us the maximum setting of overload device that I could have connected to that motor. Okay, so if it was an adjustable, I would adjust it up to whatever number I've calculated. If I was purchasing one that had a predetermined value, I would go down to the next available size as I'm not allowed to exceed the values from 28306. So what do we do if we don't have a service factor marked? We would assume that this motor has a service factor of 100% or one at this point, and then it falls into the category of less than 1.15. So we're gonna say not marked. Okay, if it is not marked, we're gonna go FLA times 1.15 and again that would give me the maximum rating or setting of my overload device. Okay, so we're going to take this from 28306 and we're going to apply it to our three individual motors here. Okay, the first one we have, we have a marked service factor of 1.3 and an FLA of 26 amps. Okay, so according to what we just talked about, that FLA is larger than 1.15, okay, inclusive of 1.15. So we're gonna take that number, that 26 amps, okay? We're gonna take our FLA of 26 amps and we're gonna multiply it by 125%. So times 1.25, okay? Which should give us somewhere around 32.5 amps. And again, if I was able to adjust, this would be the maximum setting or calculated value of our overload device for this first motor. Okay, our second motor, we have 48 amp FLA and a service factor marked of 1.1 or 110%. So again, using what we've talked about in 28306, we're gonna take our FLA of 48 amps and we're gonna multiply it by that 115% because again, it's under 1.15. So times 1.15, gives us a maximum overload setting, in this case of 55.2 amps. Okay, our third motor, our third motor does not have a service factor marked. So again, as mentioned here, if it's not marked, we're gonna assume a service factor of one. Okay, if I have a service factor of one, it falls into the category of under 1.15. So we would apply the same percentage multiplier that we did for our service factor of 1.1. So we're gonna take our 32 amps and we're gonna multiply it by 1.15, which gives us our maximum overload setting of, we should see about 36.3 amps. Okay, sorry, I'm just looking at my board to see if that's a three or an eight. If it is an eight, then I apologize. Anyways. Um, the next motor that I want to take a look at is a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to draw the motor over here. We'll do kind of the same idea down to our motor starter, which contains our overload devices. Okay. And we are going to put an FLA on this one of 60 amps. Okay, but 
This motor is a little bit more specific. We're going to say that this is a Y delta start, which means that our motor is going to start in a Y configuration, and then once it gets up to a certain speed or a certain duration of time has passed, it's actually going to switch into a delta configuration. Okay, and it's going to run in delta. So it starts in Y and it runs in delta. What that means for us when we're sizing the overloads though, is the actual overloads are located within the phases. Okay, so in the starter they'd be located within the phases. So we're gonna size those based off of the phase current of this motor. Okay, so when we're given a 60 amp FLA on a Y delta motor, that 60 amps represents the line current of our delta connection. Okay, so we have our 60 amps. Okay, so we're going to take our 60 amps and what I need to do is find the phase current of my delta configuration because that's where my overloads are. Okay, so my 60 amps and to get that phase current from our delta line current, we know that there is a root, root 3 relationship there and we also know that phase current is approximately 57.7% of line current. Okay. So we're going to take our 60 amps and we're going to multiply it by 0.577 and this is going to give us a delta phase current of 34.62 amps. Now we're not done yet, okay, because that's just the phase current value. Now I can apply what I know from over here, which is if I have an overload or service factor marked, and we're going to throw a service factor on this one of we're going to say this has a service factor of 1.2, okay? If my motor had a service factor of 1.2, I would apply my 125% because it's over the 1.15. But again, I'm going to use this phase current that I calculated here. Not my line current of 60 amps, but my 34.62 phase current, okay? So we're going to take our 34.62 amps and we're going to multiply it by 1.25, okay? And again, that's going to give me my maximum overload setting of 43.275 amps. Okay, so a little bit different on that one. Okay, but remember, if you are sizing the overload, it must be off the phase current in that delta configuration. Our other three motors, we're just using that straight FLA, which is the line current to our motors. And again, this one, we're switching over to the phase current. Okay, another way that we can get this root three smaller current is actually taking our line current of 60 amps and dividing it by root three. Okay, or we can divide it by 1.732, which is the square root of 3 as well. Okay, so hopefully this has helped you size overloads, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.